Thank you, Sam. And may I say it's an absolute pleasure to once again be invited back into the warm and loving embrace of a truly impartial broadcaster. We conservative voices have few places to make ourselves heard these days, and even I'm not simpering and cravenly obsequious enough to go on Darren Bloody Grimes podcast. <coughs> Daddy, please, just wait until I'm breathing out, I beg you. It's been another ridiculous week for the hysterical scaremongering on the part of the left with the... Oh, sorry, just got to shift my weight a little. That's better. <clears throat> With the words of the Prime Minister once again finding themselves twisted into horrible and deceptive little knots. On Monday, all he said was that the reason over 20,000 people have died in residential care from COVID-19 was that too many care homes were not following the correct procedures. You'll have to forgive me, lefty lovies and champagne socialists sitting at home in their ivory towers, but I didn't realise that the Prime Minister wasn't allowed to tell massive and obvious lies anymore. That's your angle? Really? Hmm? Sorry, Sam, not sure what you mean. Oh, sorry to interrupt, Sebastian, it's just, well, um, normally you'll come on and twist reality in order to justify the government's incompetence, or pretend that what Boris Johnson said and what he actually meant are two different things. But you've just said explicitly that shifting the blame onto care homes was a massive and obvious lie. Oh, I see. I do apologise, Sam. It appears we found ourselves with a little bit of a misunderstanding. A little error lost in translation, if you will. We're not bothering with the redirect anymore. We're just saying outright that it's fine to lie now. Oh, OK. Um, you're not following Matt Hancock's lead, then, by suggesting that what the PM meant was that nobody understood the procedures because we didn't know enough about asymptomatic transmission? No, we're not, because that's obvious bollocks. Boris literally said it was the fault of the care homes for not following the guidance, even though, at the time, there was very little guidance in place and the government were knowingly discharging thousands of patients back into homes without testing them in order to free up hospital beds. The WHO had already warned us that asymptomatic transmission was potentially possible at that point. It turns out that such a horrific and blatant attempt to shift the responsibility for that disastrous call is completely indefensible, so now we just have to say that lying is allowed. Right. Happy to have clarified that for you. Oh, ah, ah, oh. Daddy, please, give it a few seconds to cool first. Uh, now, where was I? Oh, yes, that's right. It is ludicrous that the duly elected leader of our great nation, with its throbbing and girthy mandate, should be subjected to the naive expectation that he should conduct himself with integrity and decency like some poxy commoner. This is a man, a shining adulterer on a golden hill, who stood among the people and clapped for our carers like he was one of us. It is his right, nay, his duty, to protect Britain from the indignity of having his office besmirched by the reality of his own failures. It was both right and proper to expect those that have suffered the most under his stewardship to accept the responsibility for their own suffering. If they do not, then truly, Britain is lost. Wait, Daddy, Daddy, no, not the cactus, please. No, not the cactus. Oh, honey boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Daddy. Good Lord, we're being ambitious today. <laughs> ah, ugh. Look, none of this has been easy for any of us, and the government recognises the extraordinary efforts of our wonderful care home staff. It recognises them from across the room, before whispering to everybody nearby that this is all somehow their fault. 
Nobody is saying that this country's wonderful carers haven't done their best under impossible circumstances that didn't need to be as impossible as the government made them. All the Prime Minister is saying is that really, they should have seen this coming. The Conservatives were voted back in in 2019, with Boris Johnson as the Prime Minister. If our care homes were expecting consistent support from another Conservative government, rather than hollow, tokenistic gestures followed by total abandonment and blame for thousands of unnecessary deaths, then they haven't been paying enough attention for the last five decades. I'm Sebastian Forlock, naked from the waist down and shackled with his legs apart to a leather vaulting horse in Dominic Rab Solarium, reporting for IC News. Daddy, why are you wearing a beekeeper's outfit? And what's the funnel for, Daddy? Oh, Daddy. Oh, no. oh, oh, no. oh, oh, oh the stings stay in. They stay in.